from the shores of Malibu where the waves are pumping, to the Great Wall of China, and back to the streets of Miami, Florida, where the UFC is coming. We are live. This is It's Time Radio, the show where we talk about what you think about, but may be afraid to voice. Do not worry. We will voice it for you. We talk about everything on It's Time. It's no-holds-barred radio, folks. Sex, drugs, rock and roll, politics, UFC, entertainment, film, TV, fighting, you name it. We talk about it. And we're going to talk about a few items today. What's in the news, the week that was. But let's talk about the UFC, the week that is, the week that was. I'm here with TJ DeSantis, my co-host, my producer. 16, 17, 18, 19, I don't even know how many years, but it's been going on quite a while. But uh, we have one of our guests of the show, our friends of the show, a definite warrior when it comes to walking into the UFC octagon, Eric, your boy, Anders. Hi, Eric. How are you? Man, thank you, man. Dude, that gets me and I think everybody else excited when you, when you say your boy like that. So, you know, no one, quite, no one does it quite like you, Bruce. I appreciate that. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you last week. But, you know, it uh, didn't matter. You went out. You won. You got a decision, right? That's right. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, a nice little, nice little shine to show for it. Well, tough decision against a man, you know, Jamie Pickett. Jamie Pickett is no slouch by any standards whatsoever. And, uh, you know, you pulled it out. You did it right. Uh, I did not get a chance to see the fight, Eric. Was it a, a breeze of a fight? Was it a difficult fight? Um, he had his moments in the first round. Uh, he caught me once, kind of made my knees buckle, caught me twice. And then, you know, a little bit later, he caught me again, dropped me. But I was able to turn into a takedown, put him on his back. And then the last two rounds, you know, I was able to take him down pretty easy, hold him down and beat him up from the top. So, you know, not definitely not my most exciting fight. But, you know, the fact that I got a win, um, that's really what I'm looking to do. You know, obviously, I like to go out there and, you know, throw hands and knock people out. But... You know, you, you get you get dropped, you know, it's time, it's time to switch up the game plan and adapt and overcome, you know what I mean? It's the name of the game, right? That's what you have to do. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. So. A win is a win today in the UFC, you know what I mean? You're not guaranteed yeah. anything. Well, you real, take what to you be get. honest, you know, he really didn't drop me. I was just pulling guard, you know, I really wanted to showcase my jujitsu and my, and my grappling. It just, you know, kind of happened simultaneously, you know? Yeah, true. But, you know, um, what is it like for you fighting in the uh, apex versus fighting in an arena, you know, with 10,000, 20,000 people screaming your name, rooting you on? I mean, do you find there's a big difference in your preparation or your pre-show prep back in the locker room, you know, getting to walk out? How important is that audience to you, Eric? Um, I love the audience. You know, I think in terms of like preparing for the fight and being backstage, um, I, I prepare the same, just the same, uh, whether it's an apex or have, has an audience or not. But when the fight gets going, that's the difference. You know, when you land a shot or, you know, you drop somebody or you take a big slam or something, the, you know, the crowd, you really hear the roar of the crowd. And that really kind of, excuse me, gives you an extra, an extra boost, you know, makes you a little stronger, makes you a little faster, hit a little harder, you know, because, you know, you want the crowd to sway to your side because, you know, that's a momentum killer for the other guy as well. So, you know, I think it just, I think like the small cage entices the fight because there's really nowhere to go. It's very claustrophobic in there. And then when they go on public, they had a big cage. So perfect scenario for me, they'd bring that small cage to like public events um, so that we can get to it in that small cage. And, you know, you can hear the roar of the crowd. Like I had a couple slams, a couple of big takedowns. And I can only imagine how the crowd would have been uh, hearing the thud over the microphone, you know, as we hit the ground, you know. You know, it's interesting. You, yeah, you talk about uh, crowds with with Eric Bruce. Uh, Eric has a you know pretty uh, historic football career at the collegiate level. Won a national championship. Uh, what's the largest crowd you ever played in front of, Eric? I got to assume it's over a hundred thousand people. Yeah, I think Tennessee had like one hundred ten thousand. Um, Unbelievable. The, the last game. At the time, I think Alabama's home stadium, Brian Denny sat like close to 100, maybe like 92, 95, something like that. And then the uh, the Rose Bowl, where we played the last game, I think that's just like 92, 95. So, uh, yeah, for us, some pretty big crowds, you know. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, do you think that plays a, an advantage for you when you are in a big arena in front of crowds? Do you feel like – you would ever be more comfortable than, say, your opponent because of that? 
Yeah, probably. Um, the only difference is, is like when you're playing like no, football. No, I'll be, no, no, sorry, I'll, I'll be right. I'll be right back. For some reason, I've got two screens here. Just keep talking. I'll be right back. You just got to close one, Buff. You'll figure it out. Bruce Buffer will be right back, ladies and gentlemen. They, uh, I think the big difference is, you know, when you play in a football stadium, yeah, there's like four or five times as many people there, but at the same time, they're watching, you know, 21 other people, you know, like 11 on right. defense, 11 on offense. So, you know, there's other people that are watching. When you have like 20, you know, 10, 20,000 in, in an arena, there's only two people that are watching, you and the other guy, you know. That's right. So, That's right. And there's, unless you're in Brazil, or you're fighting a foreigner in another country, like they're going to be 50 50 for the most part. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, yeah. That's I what's interesting. Out. Like, uh, sorry to cut you off, but like for whatever reason, like I, I feel like American fans are, are much more split than say like a Brazilian audience. Like the Brazilian fans, they're always going to cheer for Brazilians, but uh, American fans, I mean, they, they tend to be front runners, unfortunately, you know, they, yeah, in, yeah, in, like, in rare occasions, they'll be, you know, super patriotic and back their American guy. But for the most part, they'll be split down the middle or, or be, you know, just more, like I said, front runners. Yeah, I think the only time that they've ever been like 100 percent on my side is when I fought Darren Stewart in Phoenix. And that's, I think, mostly because I was training in Phoenix. So uh, I think it was you, Bruce, actually. Um, I think the, the headliner was Nate Diaz and Leon Edwards. You know, as soon as you said training out of Scottsdale, Arizona, the crowd lit up. And, you know, it didn't even matter that he was British. It mattered more that I was training there where the fight was. You know, which I think, you know, given history, you know, if an American fights a Brit, like they should really yeah. not like the British guy for just that period of time. And then after the fight's over, they can like him again or whatever. You know, you have you have the best nickname, Eric, like Buffer tells everyone that, you know, you're their boy during the, the intro. He's your boy. You got to cheer for your boy. If you don't cheer for your boy, who are you cheering for? Yeah, exactly. You know, so um and I, I just, you know, I wish the Americans would, like, be for the American. Just right. Like, like, when I fight in Brazil, like, they're going to tell me I'm going to die on the way to the cage. They're going to cheer for the other guy. But then as soon as the fight's over, they respect the way I fight. So, right. you know, they'll like after the fight. And they may not even not like me during the fight. They're just not going to cheer for me. You know what I mean? For sure. You know, it's um, a lot of people ask me, and they'll say, like, well, what, what's your favorite nickname? You know, what, which fighter do you really enjoy – announcing you know and i enjoy announcing all the fighters because i throw my passion into every fighter that i announce but there is something about your boy <laughs> that when i scream that out or i scream i don't scream pardon me i used to scream in the beginning because i didn't know how to announce properly now i, I call it a roar or i call it announcing but um when i announce your name you, your boy it's uh it's just got such a ring to it eric which is really really cool really cool <laughs> Yeah, and, and, you know, it's like I'm glad it worked out like that. You know, I didn't choose it. It was given. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm glad that it uh, it works. And, you know, I've been called several other things over the years, like the Savage. It was Frankenstein at one point because I was, like, super stiff and, like, robotic or whatever. But, like, whenever they started calling me a boy, that's what stuck the most. And, you know, that's what I've been rocking with the longest. So I think always and forever it'll be your boy. You got to roll with it. You know, <clears throat> in all the fighting that's going on these days, all the transition from MMA to boxing, boxing to MMA, you know, all these fights that are happening. And by the way, did you hear the big fight that just got announced today? Tyson and Jake Paul. Tyson and Jake Paul. Yeah. Well, how does that work? How does that work? <laughs> Dude, Mike Tyson's I mean, Jake 57 Paul years old. Jake his opponents, but I don't know. If, I, honestly, at 57 years old, I don't know if it's – Carefully picking an opponent when you pick Tyson, but I'll tell you one thing: that's going to be a huge pay per view. I think anything Tyson's attached to is 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 because no one can see Tyson throwing a fight. Dude. Tyson's not going to do that. You know what no. I mean? No. Tyson's not going to lay down like this last dude that 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 uh, what's his name? I hope not. Anyways, you know. Well, he, here's my thing: what is the size difference here? I mean, Jake Paul is not. I mean. Jake Paul fought Tyron Woodley at like 175 pounds or something like that. Like I don't. Well, Mike's I don't probably going to weigh. Mike's probably going to weigh 210. I'm guessing the weight will be relatively the same. The height differential will be at least. Mike's probably what five nine, five ten. I don't know what he comes in at. Uh, yeah. Is it is this so a real fight or is this an exhibition buff? Do you know? 
Let me see how they refer to it. Because I mean, I, that's the thing. Like, it's I don't an really know how stadium, so it's got to be real. I mean, it's it's yeah. I, anything can be put on anywhere, really. But like, I, I just I worry. Like, I mean, we saw Logan Paul and Mayweather box in some weird exhibition. You know what I mean? So it's like I don't, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what these things are these days. I mean, I understand it's a spectacle and it is what it is. But like, uh, if this is a real fight, I expect Jake Paul to be waking up, going, "What happened to me?" <laughs> Dude, I think the last thing that goes is your power. And, you know, you see these workout videos with Mike Tyson and uh, Rafael Cordero. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, and I'm sure he'll, he'll get on some supplements, you know what I'm saying, to get in shape, get right, you know what I mean? So, Right. Uh, how could you not pull from Mike Tyson? There, Eric? <laughs> What's that? What did you say, Buff? You're talking about extra vitamins? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They come in the form of a needle. Hmm. Okay, well, you said it, I didn't, but... <laughs> yeah, it's Mike um, Tyson, he's 57, no one's gonna, what, no one's gonna blame him or, you But, know, I mean, whatever. you're, you're on to something here, Eric, I mean, this is spectacle, there's nothing sporting about this, this doesn't really yeah. answer any sort of question whatsoever, even if Jake Paul somehow wins, we're gonna be talking about, like, well, what, what, what did we really expect from Mike Tyson? I mean, Mike looked good when he had that uh, boxing match, that exhibition with Roy Jones a few years ago, but... <laughs> I mean, the way that he's come along, and, and you mentioned the footage with uh, Rafael Cordero, like Mike Tyson, I don't think there's a scarier man over 50. Maybe there's not a scarier man over 40 than, than, than Mike Tyson, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm terrified of that, man. I don't think there's either. Mike's listed at 220 pounds. Yeah, That's okay. All right. So we'll see what happens. I, think, I mean, I think Jay Paul's a bigger dude. He just cuts down. Maybe it's Logan that's the, the big one. I don't know. The thing no, is, either Jake, way. Either way, um, whether you respect his skills or not, like, you know, the guys he's fighting and him himself, they're getting money. You know what I'm saying? For sure. His brother, you know, what, what, uh, Jake Paul, Logan Paul boxed Mayweather. Mayweather said he's not getting out the bed for less than $100 million. Right. You know, whether he made that much against them, I don't know, but I'm, I'm sure there was a lot of money to be made Yeah. Uh, against uh, Logan Paul. So... Whatever you know, that, as long as that bag comes. Yeah, and I think I think quite honestly, this is going to be one of the highest uh, hybrid boxing matches, of whatever the term they use for these boxing matches these days, will be. Tyson's listed at two hundred twenty pounds, two hundred ten pounds. Did, so, I mean, Bruce, in your, in your opinion, does this is this a pay per view that could sell on uh, you know a million buys? Because I mean, we're we're at a weird time for pay per views these days, and like there's reports out there that Jake Paul's fights don't really necessarily sell all that well. Is this one that you know does high six figures? Yeah, I agree. Uh, well, anyway, it's all about the opponent. It's kind of like a podcast guest. It's all about the podcast guest. No, know, but like, I'm I'm asking you, could, could this approach a million buys? I think it's definitely going to do over a half million buys without question. I think but it does it do close to a million? Buys. It's all about the marketing. I think it's very, very potential. Let's see what uh, Francis Ngannou and Anthony Joshua bring uh, this Friday night, you know, from Saudi Arabia. My brother Michael's over there to announce that fight. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but the problem is that's not the problem. The issue is that's on DAZN, which is a which is a firewall or money wall, whatever the term is. Yeah, paywall. Yeah, so but I mean that that's how it all is these days, Buff. Like, I mean, you, you buy pay per views. You don't buy pay per views in the conventional way. You're not calling your cable operator. You you're almost always downloading an app. I mean, that's how you watch UFCs these days. You download an app. We'll see. Am I answer your question? Yes, I think it's totally possible. I think it's possible. Definitely, I think it's going to range hmm. between a half million. Depending if my microphone stands up, a half million to a million buys. That's I'll put it down right we'll now. See what happens. Market it correctly. It's still it's Mike Tyson. Yeah. Yeah. The old. I mean, what did the Mike Tyson Roy Jones uh, pay per view bring in? Do you have any idea about that? I didn't even Maybe see. No. Fifty two hundred thousand. See, but that's the thing. We don't really even know anymore because these numbers aren't uh, you know Excuse available me. in the way they used to be, right? Like Dave Meltzer used to be the guy that could get you adequate or accurate pay per view numbers. Now you you need to have someone on the inside behind. Uh, you know, the, the direct consumer program that can even, you know, give you an idea and you don't even know if it's real. Well, let's see, but I find it very interesting. This was just announced literally like two hours ago. Well, what's the, what's the proposed date on it, Buff? Is there a proposed date? July. July. I mean, I don't know. And I don't, we'll see if it happens. I don't feel good about it happening. About the fight is that, you know, they're actually friends, it says. So, you know, this, I mean, is, a, this is a money grab. 
I'd be wanting to tell Mike Tyson we were friends if I was going to fight him too. I'd be like, we're buddies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, play, you remember, pull your punches. Remember, Mike, we're cool. You know what I'm saying? Right. You've been to my house. My, I made you dinner, you know. But I think you're right, Eric. I, he's not the guy to, like, remember that in the heat of the moment. You sting Mike Tyson one time a little too hard, all bets are off. Dude, I just hope he's that same killer, you know. I don't want to see him go out there and box. I want to see him go out there and be the puncher that he used right. to be, you know what I mean? I could probably, you know, he's 57, so, you know, I'm not, like, expecting him to, you know, go out there like that. But at the same time, like, you know, I see the training video – for however long he can do that, I want to see him do that. You know what I'm saying? Where he's got two rounds in him, three rounds in him, four rounds in him. I want. I just want to see if, you know, Jay Paul will really take a punch. Well, let's put it this way. If you want to talk about styles, which styles dictate winners in boxing, styles dictate winners in MMA, styles dictate winners in a lot of different sports. The Mike Tyson style of old versus the Jake Paul style of today, no question, Tyson wins with his style. Gets inside, gets his head on his chest, hooks, and does what he does. No offense, Jake, you're going down. But you know what? Time will tell. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe Jake trying to get the money, too, you know? Grab oh, the money. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, Nganu and Anthony Joshua. I want to say one thing about this fight. Um, my brother was texting me last night from Saudi Arabia how Nganu just looks like an absolute beast. And we all know he yeah. does look like an absolute beast, the way he trains. I'll say mm -hmm. one thing about this fight. I'm very proud of Francis. His story is amazing. It's a movie in the making. It's history in the making. I do feel that he won the Fury fight personally. I've said that publicly before. I'm not the only one that said that, whether a thin line or a long line. Uh, he beats Anthony Joshua. And remind me, guys, is there a belt on the line here somewhere? I, I don't know enough about boxing at that level to tell you it's if there's some there's like, weird belt. There's like yeah. 40, 50 belts in boxing. I can't even keep track of them. It, yeah. it doesn't even matter, though, Bruce. Here, here's the thing. You're looking at a guy in Francis me, Agano. Let me, let, me, let me finish. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. If he wins, when he wins, then he literally is the baddest man on the planet. You know? Being a champion in MMA... And being, I assume, a champion belt winner in boxing or just defeating somebody like Joshua after he comes off his performance against Fury, that's really like the baddest man on the planet in my book. Man, I, I think personally he's going to beat Anthony Joshua. If there was any question about his boxing skill, I think it was answered uh, against Tyson Fury. Yeah. The problem is, is he's a dog, and I think that Anthony Joshua can be broke. So Anthony Joshua may get off early, but in those later rounds when when Nganu's still there, and he, I don't think he's as mobile and as long as, as Fury. So, you know, some of those punches that Nganu was throwing, if they were the same height or the same length, you know, probably would have put Fury out. You know what I'm saying? Joshua was way closer to uh, Nganu's height and length. So I think, you know, he throws one of them big bombs. He'll, he'll be in reach of Anthony Joshua and, Dude, trust me, I've been hit by a gun. That shit ain't cool. It's not fun. Yeah, I, I can imagine. I wouldn't enjoy that either. So, <laughs> you know, this is a pretty exciting weekend because, um, TJ, finish what you were saying because I interrupted you. Uh, I was just going to say, you know, Francis, for me, um, you know, uh, I think uh, to be the baddest man on the planet, Bruce, like you were saying, uh, I think you have to be a, an active mixed martial artist. Uh, to me, your boxing, I understand that. That is definitely a form of fighting. But uh, I, I have a hard time saying that anybody's the best fighter in the world when they only play one style uh, of, of fighting. That, that is just me. Uh, maybe it's an unpopular opinion. Uh, if he beats An Anthony Joshua, which I, I do believe he will, um, I think the idea that he comes back to mixed martial arts gets you know smaller and smaller. The percentage of him returning to MMA gets smaller and smaller with more success that he gets in boxing because he can have bigger paydays. The, the boxing payday is always going to eclipse anything that he's going to get, especially fighting in, in the PFL, uh, which w he is signed to. So um, I just wish the best for Francis. You know, hopefully he can you know make all those dreams come true. Uh, he pretty much has already. Like you said, Bruce, it's a, a movie in the making, but. Uh, uh, I think it's sort of a catch-22, I think, for MMA fans. The more success he has in the boxing ring, the less likely we ever see him in a mixed martial arts cage again. But you talk about money. Saudi Arabia is throwing around money. You see what he's doing, what they're paying these soccer players and these golfers and things oh, like yeah. that. So oh, yeah. Saudi Arabia got the bread. They're, they're throwing around money, Eric, like, like you would and know, 
and wouldn't believe. I mean, the personal appearance monies they paid for that recent fight, I'm not going to mention names. I know guys who were invited over that haven't even fought for years, uh, 50000 People leaving, getting bags with $60,000 Rolexes in the bag along with the cash. Dude, they all they're Kanye doing is showing up. Paid. They had Kanye come. Yeah. Kanye, Kanye. How much do you think it cost Kanye to do anything? Kanye's an asshole. A lot. He don't want nothing to do with nobody. But he showed up to the fight. Yep. Kanye and uh, the soccer player. What's the famous soccer player? The Ronaldo. The Ronaldo, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's probably a million-dollar payday for him to sit in that seat. Who knows? And who, who they got him to come over there and play? He plays for a Saudi Arabian team, though. Yeah, he does, yep. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy money. But, um, you know, it, it's interesting where this is going to go because the Saudis are promoting more and more fights. I know there's a UFC that's planned to be mm-hmm. over there. Uh, hopefully this year. I'm looking forward to that when that happens. Um, but, you know, okay, we've got the, the fight with Ngannou. Excuse me. Um, pardon me. I'm sorry. Yeah. This weekend? Okay, you talking about Ngannou UFC? On Friday. Oh, go ahead. And then on Saturday, we go right into UFC 299. Let's talk about it, guys. This is a big, big show. Yeah, I'm here. I'm in Miami yeah. already. And, uh, yeah, you're in Miami. I'm taking a red eye to get there. I'll be there in the morning. Um, you got Sean O'Malley and Marlon Vera, you know, facing off against each other for the second time. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is no idle situation. You know, Sean O'Malley, I, I, I'm proud of this young kid. You know, he he definitely walks to his own tune. He's mm-hmm. very distinctive. He's got the it factor, you know, going for him. He's making tons of money. Marlon, the family man that he is, the, the straight-up wonderful person, a really good human being um, from my experiences with Marlon. Uh, I'm very excited about both these fighters. So lay it out, Eric. You're the fighter. How do you see this fight going? Man, obviously, it can go either way. You know, I think that Sean's gotten a lot better since the last time they fought. But nobody has more finishes in Bantamweight history than Cheeto. So, you know, especially for a guy who is a very slow starter. You know, you see him kind of get almost beat up in the early rounds. Then he comes back and, and wins. And not only just wins, but finishes people. So I, I think that he fought a little conservatively against Pedro Munoz just so that, he, you know, to, like, get the win. Because that's what mattered, and now he's fighting for a title. So, man, I love both these guys to death. Like, they're 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 good people, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, one guy's the sniper, the other guy's got the most finishes. So, you know, it's a toss-up. Okay, TJ? Yeah, I mean, I think Eric hit it on the head, and you did, you know, almost uh, without talking about this fight in particular a few moments ago, Bruce. Styles make fights, and stylistically, uh, you know, for whatever reason, I just seem to doubt Sean O'Malley stylistically. I, I just think that guys that are more aggressive, guys that have grappling uh, ability are, are going to, you know, overpower him, take him down, attack his legs, etc. But the guy still gets it done. Like, I thought Peter Yan was going to beat O'Malley. O'Malley got it done. Uh, I thought Aljamain Sterling was going to be able to beat uh, O'Malley. O'Malley got it done. I think Cheeto Vera is going to beat Sean O'Malley, but if O'Malley gets it done, I mean, that would be the commonality to all of these fight picks that I've made l- lately, and uh, I don't know. It'll probably end up being the Sugar Chef Saturday night here in Miami. So you just do them, Cheeto, is what you're saying. I, I, mean, I hate to say it, yeah. But, I, but again, <laughs> like, I, think, I think Cheeto has more well-rounded weapons. Over the course of a five-round fight, I think that he can – have moments where maybe he doesn't necessarily look good, you know, all five rounds, but he should, in my opinion, get the better of, of O'Malley over the course of 25 minutes. But he, here's the thing. O'Malley, we've seen, only needs one moment to shine. It, it, sometimes right. you don't get past that one moment. So uh, he's we'll see got an ass step back right hand. Yeah. You know, he's a sniper, dude, you know. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, too. You, you talk about being conservative, Eric. Like, you can't be too conservative with a guy like O'Malley, even if it's in your better interest, because then the fight starts to get away from you. Then you start hearing fans boo. Then, you know, you, you worry about being in a situation where maybe you get your hand raised, but Dana White's pissed at you because he didn't put on a very good fight. You know, it's, it's like uh, O'Malley's one of those guys that you want to try to, you know, win the game, you know, per se. But sometimes winning the, the game against a guy like O'Malley can be one of the uglier routes to victory. And, you know, that's got to be pressing for you when you're, you know, fighting at the biggest stage. If I get my hand raised as a champion, I'm not really concerned with how Dana feels about me. He got to deal with me now. I hear I you. He, 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 he's put on some, like, you know, on his way, you know, he looked, you know, amazing. I beat him. And then when he got the belt, yeah. he just was winning decisions. And he's one of the highest paid guys, most popular guys. So, yeah. 
you know, I don't necessarily think Sean O'Malley will take that route, but if he does have a boring fight and edges out a win, either way, you know, they're champion, you know, so. W- well, winning fixes everything, Connors. right? Yeah. Yeah. Sean plays the role in and out of the octagon. I mean, he's always on always uh, on show, always always being flamboyant. Yeah. You know, he's definitely created a style that uh, is actually even more flamboyant than Connor, with the exception that Connor's suits are worth a lot more than what Sean puts on. Um but at the same time, I can't, knock, I can't knock Sean for what he's doing. He's creating a very distinctive style. He's recognized very, very, you know, solid for what he does. And, uh, you know, he's making money. He's probably already broken the seven-figure mark uh, more than twice in his work with the UFC. And I wish nothing but the best of every fighter, including yourself, Eric, to make that kind of money, to become millionaires that you deserve. Anytime you put your blood, sweat, and tears on the line, I feel you should be making a million dollars, even if you're the first, car- first fight on the pay-per-view card, <laughs> quite frankly. You know, I, th- I think the allure to people for Sean O'Malley is that is the way he looks. You know, he's skinny. He don't got no muscles. He's got tattoos everywhere. He looks like a lot of kids who are in their mom's basement playing video games who can't fight a lick but wish they could. He's like, hey, that guy looks like me. You know what I'm saying? They got the, the colored hair and they look like Sean. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure, like, if you looked at Sean, you would like think he's like a nerd. You know what I mean? Like... He's, you know, he's super skinny. Like, he's not, like a lot of fighters, they got big muscles, they're athletic, you know, they're explosive, things like that. So I think to, like, the common person, they're like, hey, he looks like me, you know, and look what he's doing, you know. I can't yeah. do that, but he gives me hope that I could, you know. I've seen People a connect. I've seen a lot of like a few videos of Sean even back in high school, you know, when he was doing what he was doing back in high school. I mean, he's been a fighter from day one. So good for him, good for Marlon. Let's see who becomes the new undisputed or the still undisputed, and we'll find that out on Saturday night from the uh, Caseo Center over there in Miami. Uh, Dustin Poirier, Benoit Saint Denis, um, very tough fight, tough fight for for Dustin, which Dustin seems to always have tough fights, and like he says, you know, retirement is somewhere in the future, but he knows that every time he leaves the octagon, he leaves a piece of himself in the octagon, as I think all of you do when you go in there and do your thing, and. Um, Poirier, Denise. Uh, I know Denise is the number 12 contender, Poirier the number three contender. That doesn't matter, Buff. Like you, you look at the line Poirier, on this fight. I, I, this is no slouch fight. No slouch yeah, fight. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. Rankings aside, uh, you're looking at uh, Dustin Poirier being the underdog in this fight. And uh, that's interesting. Yeah, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that shakes out. Uh, a lot of people leaning towards uh, Benoit St. Denis. Um, I, I have a hard time ever betting against, and I don't bet, but I have a hard time ever putting my figurative money uh, against Dustin Poirier because the guy is just one of the best to ever do it. Um, you know, he, he's one of those dudes that every time he wins, people are talking about another title run. Um, I, you know, it's, it's good to hear that he's uh, acknowledged the fact that he's going to, you know, have to retire relatively soon, that, you know, that's uh, on the horizon. But uh, we'll see if this is the passing of the torch moment. Um, you know, odds makers seem to think so. Uh, I like Dustin in this fight, though. We'll see what happens. I, I like Dustin in the fight, too, but I just look on paper. I never, I never say who's going to win, who's going to lose. Uh, just to me, it's always made the best man, best woman win. I, I, yeah. I have to look at it that way before I walk in there and roar their names to the world. Uh, Kevin Holland and Michael Ven- Venom Page. Uh, Kevin's always a very shiny fighter. You know, always enjoy watching Kevin do his thing. Um, as far as Michael and his background uh, on this. He's a savage Michael, buff. Pardon me? He's a savage. I mean, uh, I don't know if you saw what he did to uh, uh, Cyborg's forehead when they fought. I mean, he dented in his skull. Uh, he's he's no one to take lightly. Agreed, agreed. I can't I can't say any different. Gilbert Burns, Jack Della Mandalena. Yeah, dude, um, I got I'm, I gotta go with with Gilbert. You know, um, he can strike. You know, Jack's got some like really solid solid boxing, solid yeah. boxing. But I think that. Uh, Gilbert Burns is going to lean on experience and his grappling. Dude. He's strong yeah. and quick, too. Uh, his wrestling is really good, too. So 
Uh, I, I've been overly impressed with him at welterweight too, Eric. Like I, I know Gilbert Burns yeah. is a phenomenal lightweight, but he's you know been a contender at welterweight. He's always been a factor in the upper echelon of that 170 pound division. Um, you mentioned the the striking uh, of Jack. Yeah, he has it, but man, you cannot afford to slip up and let Gilbert Burns get on top of you. And we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I like Gilbert in this fight. I'm with you on that. Um, again, may the best man win. Did I just say I'm with you on that? <laughs> no, nah, I didn't hear well, that. I mean, stylistically, you're, you, I mean, you can say, you know, I think, you know, what you could point to to victory, but no, you're not I making know, a big I, buff. It's fine. Hey, let's put it this way. Gilbert has the edge. He's the favorite fighter yeah, when it comes to the fight sure. odds, whatever that means in any fight. Who knows these days? Cause I mean, it tells knows. you a lot, though, Bruce. I, like, that's the thing. Like, people talk about betting being a problem in sports. The betting line tells you more than just, uh, you know, who's the favorite fighter. It tells you what the betting public are leaning on. It tells you where the odds makers open the line and then where the the public bet it to. And uh, public perception, I think, plays a, a big factor in a lot of things. And, uh, you know, I, I think that the betting line, while it's a narrative to maybe, you know, only gamblers, quote unquote, uh, it gives you a good idea of what the, the public feels uh, could happen on fight night. I agree. I agree. I'll tell you a couple other good fights here, along with all the fights coming on the card. <clears throat> Iwan Kutalaba is always a pleasure to watch <laughs> against Felipe Lins. <laughs> you ready, Buff? You ready for, for Kutalaba to come out there and be all intense and you be the middleman? Yeah, you know, I'm always, I, I always cue the referee and uh, the commission, you know, if they step in, they step in. But I know what, I know Iwan's going to walk across the octagon or do some kind of a showboat thing. I've, us- I've usually stepped in. It's not my position to do so, but um, just to keep the peace that he doesn't get too far across the octagon. So it's always an interesting introduction when I'm when I'm introducing Iwan Kudalava. Uh, Curtis Blaze and uh, Jay Elton Almeida. Uh, that's going to be, you know, somebody's going to go down in that fight. That's a that's a big fight. That's two big boys going at it. Macy Barber and Caitlin now uh, has changed her name to her married name. Yeah, uh, Sermonara. Uh, Solid fight. You know, number six, number four contenders. It's going to be very exciting. Love watching the, the ladies go at it. And I think, uh, and then we have JoJo. JoJo Wood and uh, Marina Morose is the very first fight on the card. JoJo, always exciting to watch. Always going in to do it all. This is a really solid card. I mean, we have 14 fights on this card. It's a solid card, too, when you consider that UFC 300 is the next card. You know, it's really hard to stack fights uh, around before and after this this massive card coming up here. Uh, in April, and you know, not to to give Sean Shelby and Mick Maynard undue props. I, I think they've done a, a great job, uh, you know, with with stacking this card and uh, you know doing so uh, just a month before the the big one in three hundred. I got you. Hey, um, Eric, are you in for a little uh, as we shut down on UFC? Not shut down because it's going to start up on Saturday. But let's get into some news from the week that was. Eric, can you hang with us for like you know another five ten minutes? I'm here, baby. All right. All right, baby. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Um, I got about 10 minutes buff, so just let you know. I got a very hard out, so. 10 minutes? 10 minutes. Got it. You all know about the uh, the, th- the movie with Alec Baldwin? Right. Yeah, Rust, I believe it was called. Yeah, the accidental death when the gun went off. Yeah, and Alex Rust. Oh, yeah. And the person was killed. Uh, they have now found the armor, the person that handles the weapons on this on this set. She's mm. found guilty. Yeah, manslaughter. Manslaughter. Oh, uh, well, well how does the loaded – I thought they used props anyway, so I don't even know You're how they – supposed to, it's right? Somehow a live round got in the gun. Right, and Aaron, this has happened before, him. right? Did, did, is this Brandon, the same sort of situation with Brandon, Brandon Lee? Lee? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Brandon Lee, another situation with another actor where the, the, um, the blank shoots a paper wad, and the paper wad went in the side of his head, and that killed him. Brandon Lee, I think, uh, was an actual bullet, too. Yeah, that was an actual situation. Um, with that being said, I don't know what kind of a sentence she's going to get, whatever. It uh, doesn't bring back the person that tragically was killed. Yeah. I think Alec Baldwin is still under some charges here, too, that I don't think have been decided yet also. We'll see what happens with him. He was indicted also recently. You know, I'm, I'm surprised that we even still fire blanks in these films with all the CGI that you have now. And, and maybe that'll change, you know, with, with some you know tragedy like this happening. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, man, I I don't think I would be comfortable with anyone shooting a gun at me, you know, even with a blank. Like, no, no, thank you. No, you don't want a blank fired at you. I, no, you don't. And uh, the noise is still the same. Yeah, you never fire blanks. 
You know, and that's the thing too. I hear, I hear like those old stories. Maybe it's a wives' tale buff, but when you have those firing squads that end up executing somebody, that like more often than not, the person that's being executed ends up having a heart attack at the time that they get shot anyway, or leading. <laughs> They're gone anyways. That person's supposed to die. So right, but like I'm just saying, like in your mind, like you think you're, you, you know, you know you're not going to get shot, but maybe your body still, you know, freaks out and your heart stops. I don't know. I well, we certainly can't ask him. That's true. Nobody can tell us what. No, nobody can tell us what happens. But I, I mean, it would true. be a freak out no matter what. Did yeah. you guys hear about what happened at the Venetian Hotel? The Venetian. Nah. Okay, the Venetian is one of the finer hotels in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Every room is a suite, okay? Yeah. Uh, a guest uh, was uh, in their suite, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he claims the uh, Venetian never comped his room or paid for his food or various other expenses. But he uh, was stung in his testicles by a scorpion while he was asleep in bed. Okay. <laughs> okay. I've heard of bed bugs. Yeah, a little crazy. He thought he was being stabbed in his private area by a sharp glass or knife. Oh, well, I mean, he was. It was just a stinger. I mean, it doesn't yeah. matter what it is. Back to his underwear. I mean, think Dude, about it. It, it, I know it's it doesn't desert. matter if it's a sliver, if it's a piece of glass, if it's a stinger. Anything that is puncturing your scrotum. No, it's not okay. <laughs> not okay. And it's going to hurt like a lot. It's going to hurt. For qu no question. I, God knows the lawsuit that's going to come out of that one. I, come on. You can't prove that the hotel was the reason it happened. I mean, it's it's Vegas. You know, it could have gotten attached in his luggage or something. I don't know. A uh, smart attorney is going to get behind that one and do whatever they want to do, TJ. Joey oh. Chestnut destroyed all the competition. Yeah. Right? He did it again. Pierogies this time, though, right? Yeah, pierogies. What yeah. exactly is a pierogi? It's like a potato dumpling. Like, think of like a pot sticker. You know, like a pot sticker, like the little dumpling with uh, stuff inside of it. That's kind of what like uh, a pierogi is. I think it's Polish. Um, and uh, I don't know it's how like potato he does dumpling. It. I, I, try, I try my best Joey Chestnut impression after I fight. I eat as much as I possibly can. And there's no way that I could do. What he does, man. That just... But you got to, like, prepare yourself, Eric. Like, there's literally training involved. He eats a bunch of stuff. He stretches yeah. out his stomach, all sorts of business. I saw that. What was the the Asian guy before him? Kobayashi. Um, oh. I watched, like, a documentary on that dude. And yeah. They were actually saying, like, skinny people can eat more because there's more room for their stomach to stretch. But this dude, like... To train, like you just said, dude, he was eating like bowl and bowl and bowl after pasta and this and that. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, how are you so skinny? Because he was not like he was a workout freak or anything like right. that. Anybody else on earth is not going to look like they look <laughs> eating like that. Right. No, it's Metabolism, crazy. I guess, you know? Uh, whatever it is, more credit to him, but all I know is that I wouldn't pass those pierogies for about a week. So, <laughs> I love pierogies. I don't know if I can eat as many as chestnut, but I I try. I love They're dumplings. great. No, nah, you I can't. Can I can eat. I can eat dumplings. They're they're so good. I love I love dumplings very much. But after one meal of dumplings, I don't need to touch them for another week. I'm, you see, I'm but that's the problem. Like you th you think chestnut even likes hot dogs anymore? Because he's won all those you know hot dog contests on the Fourth of July. Like I, I assume someone shows him a hot dog in like December, and he's just like, oh. Nah, he's probably not eating it at the cookout, but that's how he's making his living. So Fourth of July is probably his favorite oh, food, yeah. you know. Probably. God only knows. Uh, you know, two top favorite, uh, excuse me, two, two top highest paid actors in Hollywood in 2023. Surprisingly enough, because his his films go to Netflix or wherever, but they're paying big money. Adam Sandler came in at number one. I thought you were going to say Ryan Reynolds, who was also on a Netflix deal, but uh, I mean, really? good for Adam Sandler. Good for Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler, yeah, the shows, and, and Margot Robbie was the woman, uh, female lead. Uh, Sandler, uh, $73 million in 2023. And then let me see what Robbie got paid. I'm going to say that she probably got less. Uh, $59 million. That's still quite a bit of money. Jesus. But a lot of that's from Barbie. Yeah, Barbie's what a huge film that was. Film. But what has what Adam, Sand Adam Sandler done... Just that gem movie, right? Yeah, he's done a bunch on there. They don't no, necessarily been, get more. the they don't get the the hype, you know, of the old Happy Madison films, you know, Happy Gilmore, uh, okay, uh, the like. But they uh, get, but they get the viewership. 
you know. Yeah, the, but well, that's 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 what I don't understand though, Bruce. Is there was like a big uh, argument, and I think this is why there was like a strike. Like the residuals aren't as good on the streaming platforms as say they are, and you know, movie theaters and you know, television replays and things like that. So yeah, uh, the, the residuals I, residuals are depending when you're paid a lot of money for a film. It's not like you get residuals when you're paid, you know, ten million dollars. It's not like you're going to get another ten million. I think it was the residuals on like the like the co co like the co star and the extras and stuff. They were the right. ones complaining yeah. about the not the extras, but like the right. stunt people yeah. and things well, like that. Sure, it's also how their agent negotiates those deals for them going in. It's all involved. It's all in the negotiation, gentlemen. It's all how it's done. That's business. Okay, uh, so. Good. Everybody's making a lot of money. Let's try and make a lot of money ourselves. Uh, Roadhouse coming out in March with um, Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor. I'll be announcing that during the show on Saturday. Uh, I'll probably have a little affair at my house to watch it when it comes out. I always love the original Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze. Definitely a, a fun film to watch. You know, cult, cult, cult classic in its own way. We can all laugh a little bit at the fight scenes and such as we can in most films. But definitely... Um, Definitely a piece of work in its own. The new Roadhouse looks to be a, like a fun, fun movie and, and tailor-made perfectly for Conor McGregor, that's for sure. Isn't that one coming straight to Prime Video as well? So it's Prime another video. one that you don't necessarily have to buy if you have a Prime subscription. No, no it'll be on Prime Video. Which is crazy to me. One last little thing before we go is uh, the Sopranos booth. You know, the booth they always ate at in the show, in the diner. Mm -hmm. um, it just uh, sold for $82,000. Damn. Wow. Wow. People will buy anything for anything, right? It's true. I thought it would go for more than that, dude. Sopranos is one of, like, one of the best series, TV show series ever, you know? Yeah. Ever. Hey, Eric, do you ever sell your fight gear? Every now and then. Like, but, but usually, honestly, like, I care about the people who care about me, so uh, I always, like, give them away to, like, good friends and, like, you know, That's things cool. like that, so... I got, I got get you, money other ways. You, if you want to provide fight gear, I should have mentioned you before, but go to my um, site, <clears throat> my partner site called millions.co. Have okay. you ever heard of it? No, uh -uh, uh, tell me. We'll make all your merchandise. It doesn't cost you a dime. We'll ship it. You'll get the major lion's share of the profits versus the maybe 10% you'll get on the license deal with a, with a clothing company, you know, whether it be um, – whoever you sell an item for fifty dollars you make the lion's share of it you're involved in the designs everything you can have watch parties you can offer videos on the site to your fans uh so just go to millions.co check it out you can sign up right on the site the shevchenko sisters are on it joe montana we have over five thousand athletes from every major sport oh uh, well, okay all right yeah check it out millions.co tj you got information on it you can send them don't you for sure yeah i'll, I'll hook eric up with info yeah, appreciate it, TJ. Yeah, check that out. That would be a, a very good, advantageous thing for you to do. And also, too, I want to thank our sponsor. It's Time Cologne, still the top seller on Amazon. Definitely want to smell like a champion. Get your It's Time Cologne. I need one. I need some of that. Right there, baby. There it is. <laughs> check it out. I'm not trying to sell you, Eric, but it's, uh, trying it's, to sell it's you on Amazon.com. You can get it right there. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. All good. All good. And Puncher's Chance, the top five best sipping bourbon in America. Very proud about it. It's my bourbon. I don't know if you've seen that either, Eric. I have seen that. That I have seen. I'm sober, though. I don't, I don't drink too much, man, I guess. I'm, I'm not even going to show it to you again. You know, I'll, I'll you be smell like a champion, but you don't need to drink like a champion. Okay? That's right. That's right. I'll be no, I'm going home with one shoe and no, no shirt. <laughs> 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 all right sounds good eric it's been a pleasure having you on the show and uh i'm happy that you're a friend of the show we really appreciate everything you do for us absolutely thank you guys for having me i love being on here thank you very much wish you all the best get your rest stay with you know enjoy your family your loved ones you deserve it and uh i plan not to miss announcing you the next time you're in the octagon eric i, promise. I appreciate it all right your boy there Can't go. wait. <laughs> cool. All right, Eric, big cheers. All the best All right. to you. Eric, do you want to say anything before we sign off? No, nah, man. I'm, I'm here for you guys, man. Thank you guys for having me. Sounds good. TJ? 
Uh, check out Extra Rounds. We're live on the ground this week in Miami. Um, you can check out uh, our broadcasts uh, as people get this. They're pretty much going to already be in the can. So head over to Fight Pass, uh, sign up. But it's the biggest no-brainer in combat sports, $9.99 a month. Gets you access to over 200-plus live events a year. The entire UFC, Pride FC, Strike Force, WEC, basically every fight that ever mattered uh, in mixed martial arts that's available for you on UFC Fight Pass. So uh, go sign up and uh, yeah, follow me on Twitter, at TJ DeSantis, or X, or whatever it is. I don't know. Very, very cool. For me, I will see you off in the Octagon on Saturday, Miami, Kaseya Center, ready to rock and roll, ready to see the fighters rock and roll. It's going to be one big night of fights. Uh, enjoy your Friday night watching Ngannou and Anthony Joshua. Go, Francis. Can't wait to see you reign as champion of that event that you're in. And everybody set your goals, write them down. So when you step on that yellow brick road to your future, perform at your best, be your best, whether you're champion number one, number two, or ten, it doesn't matter. If you perform at your best, you're passionate about what you do, then you're winning. And that's what we're all about on It's Time Radio. It's about winning, folks. So, Eric, our winner on the show, big wink to you too, Eric. Big cheers and no fears forever, everybody. Take care. <laughs> See you next week. Uh, appreciate it, guys. You got it. Buffer out. Eric out. TJ out. See y'all.